the last year, TV screens in America have looked a lot like this. Flooding across Northern Europe, wildfires on the West Coast, hurricanes in the Southeast. Climate change is here and now, but instead of imbuing us with a passionate defiance of the status quo, this deluge of disasters has largely left us numb, cursed by blase attitudes toward a doomed world. The thing is, we all know it's a societal scale issue and nothing is really gonna happen until the government takes the first step. So largely, while our TVs show us this, our lives still look like this. Fossil fuels power the modern day. And it's not likely to change. Natural gas for heating homes, clothes, food, and water. Gasoline for, for mowing and driving. Look, climate change is a complicated issue, and no one solution will keep global temperatures in check. That story I just told you, that all is lost, and the government's the only body capable of acting, and fossil fuels have won the day, that story is a lie. Electrification, or the process of replacing systems that run on fossil fuels with those that run on electricity, offers us a path forward. I first took interest in electrification as a 15-year-old kid in high school with the dream of driving an electric car. Uh, I was already a fan of Tesla by that point, and only a couple of years earlier, my love of the automotive world had been shattered by the realization that exhaust emissions are one of the largest contributors to climate change. So I spent the next three years raising money and, and learning and then eventually designing and building until I had finally, at 18, built an all-electric Volkswagen Super Beetle. <laughs> so maybe it did drive a little bit more like the forklift that the motor came from than a Tesla, but it was an electric car nonetheless. You see, I didn't care that it was slow or that it randomly died on me all the time because I wanted to manifest a low carbon lifestyle despite any inconveniences. And that three years that I spent constantly shocking myself with car batteries taught me an unexpected lesson. If climate action is as hard as building a homemade electric car, then climate change is an unsolvable problem. If climate action is as hard as that, as I was making it, then climate change is unstoppable. But given that I'm up here peddling a solution, clearly I don't believe that climate change is unstoppable. And that's largely because climate action does not have to be that hard. I'll walk you through it. According to the EPA, electricity generation accounts for approximately 25% of emissions in the US. So even if in some grace and needy daydream, all fossil fuel power plants were replaced with renewable power capacity overnight, we would still see at max a 25% decrease in emissions. And you can see that still leaves another 65% of emissions from things like commercial and residential activities and transportation and industrial processes on the table completely untouched. The primary reason that renewables don't lead to greater reductions in carbon emissions is that many of our vehicles and our most power intensive appliances don't run on electricity. But for the sake of argument, let, let's just say that America does run on renewable power. What if we all exclusively used electric forms of transportation like EVs or electric trains? another 29% of emissions gone. What if we electrified all residential and commercial appliances? Another 13% of emissions gone. But we don't live in this reality. You can see that electrification and renewables do work together to accelerate America towards a low carbon future, but America does not run on renewable power, which begs the question, is electrification even worth pursuing absent a clean grid? And I, I imagine that some of you are probably skeptical, thinking, surely using more electricity that I just told you comes from burning fossil fuels is not a good way to reduce emissions. But here's a graph depicting the average energy mix or proportions of energy sources in America. You can see there that 
almost 20% of our power already comes from ultra low carbon sources like nuclear power and renewable power. So when you go to cook your pasta on a gas stove, 100% of the energy you're using comes from burning fossil fuels and thus emits carbon. On average though, when you use an electric stove, only 80% of the energy you're using uh, was produced with fossil fuels and thus emits carbon. From a climate perspective, it is better to use electricity that at least in part comes from low carbon sources than from burning fossil fuels directly. And given that renewable energy is now the lowest cost energy uh, system to implement in America, we're likely to see vast expansions of sources like wind and solar in the next few years, making electrification an even more important piece of the puzzle toward a low carbon future for America. But yeah, yeah whatever, whatever, that, that's great. What does that look like for you and me? Well, uh, let's take a walk through your house. So that yeah, two-stroke gas leaf blower that you pull out every fall emits as much in half an hour as this Ford F-150 pickup truck does driving from Texas all the way to Alaska. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, not to mention that it's destroying your ears with noise pollution and poisoning your lungs as it emits partially combusted hydrocarbons just inhaling fuel fumes the entire time. Electric blowers, on the other hand, like this model, are quiet. They don't emit any carbon or other pollutants. And models like this Ego now rival the performance of gas. And we see these same trends with all of the equipment in the average American garage, from weed eaters to mowers, all of it. And now moving into the garage, uh, dropping battery costs and rising resale values have finally made electric vehicles viable in the new and used car market. Not to mention their ever-increasing range. Kelly Blue Book reported that in the last year, the average price of a new car in America was between $40,000 and $45,000. A lot of money. But that's how that compare, here's how that compares to some of the best-selling EVs in America. You can see there, there, there's some above, some below, but largely pretty close. And combined with the fact that Consumer Reports found the operational costs of an electric vehicle compared to a gas vehicle to be half, it really makes more than makes up for any disparities between an EV and a comparable gas vehicle. Personally, I do appreciate the three seconds zero to 60 time of a Tesla Model 3. That's probably not as important as the three times lower life cycle emissions of an EV compared to a gas car. Now these solutions that I've outlined carry into the household too. I'm imagining you probably have a, a gas water heater or, or maybe a gas furnace for heat. There are now viable options to replace these that run on electricity. Heat pump electric water heaters remove heat from the air to heat your water. And according to the National Resources Defense Council are so effective at doing so that they're as much as seven times more efficient than a gas alternative. And this same heat pump technology works as a replacement to your average HVAC system too, meaning that you can heat and cool your home with highly efficient appliances that will save you money on your utility bills and will slash your car home household carbon emissions by approximately half. But the scale of electrification doesn't stop at the level of the home. College campuses like this one, for instance, use fossil fuels much in the same way that a household does, but scaled up to accommodate tens of thousands of faculty, staff, and students. Georgia Tech, for instance, produces roughly 37,000 metric tons of CO2 equivalent each year just from directly burning fossil fuels on campus. For reference, that's about 2,000 Americans worth of carbon emissions each year. An electrified Georgia Tech could mean that this 37,000 metric tons, 2,000 Americans worth of carbon footprint, could fade to zero. It would mean no more leaf blower induced asthma attacks on the way to class, or, or diesel buses that break down the one day you forgot your umbrella at home. Or that whistle that's not only really annoying, but also uses steam from gas boilers. We're just one medium-sized campus. Imagine the power of campuses across the state 
the region or, or the country following a similar path. And the scale of electrification doesn't end with our campuses either. Some of the largest corporations in America have already started to lead in electrification. Well, maybe not the, the best example of ethical business practices, Amazon has recently purchased 100,000 electric delivery vans from Rivian Automotive. Think about the fuel and maintenance cost savings over 100,000 vehicles. And you quickly see the business case. But now think about how much carbon would be emitted if instead they had purchased another 100,000 conventional vehicles. And they're not alone either. Hertz Rental Car just purchased 100,000 Teslas in a deal where they partnered with Uber in an attempt to lower emissions and meet rising consumer interest in EVs. But corporate electrification goes beyond vehicles. McKinsey and company reported last year that as much as half of industrial fuel usage could be eliminated and replaced with electricity with current technology. In other words, we could be scaling electrification right now. Yes. Yes. America does need solar and wind energy to meet our climate mitigation targets. But electrification offers the clearest path forward for the rest of us to contribute to a low carbon future until elected officials and power companies will renewables to the forefront of the grid. We have the technology. We know how to apply it. And we have a responsibility to step up in the face of climate change. But I get it. Oh, climate change is scary. And if you watch the news, it's easy to feel like there's nothing that you can really do. Now, I, I could end my speech here with a, a cliche, everyone do their part. And then afterwards, we could go back and forth ad nauseum about the impact of individual scale actions versus uh, large uh, group actions. But I would rather leave you with this. Start with your sphere of influence. If you own a home or run a household, electrify your appliances as they age. If you're a student like me, organize some friends to start advocating for electrification on your campus. You'll, you'll be surprised how much you can accomplish, trust me. If you're in a position of leadership, whether a, a campus administrator or even a C-suite executive, take a step back and think about how your organization could mirror the leaders in electrification in the industrial space. You might even save money, improve your public image, and decrease your contribution to climate change. But if you don't remember anything else from my speech, at the very least, trash your damn gas leaf blowers. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>